So here's where we left off. Okay, here's where we left off here. Okay, so we added a clarification here. We added a, a brief clarification that this is the clarification. The saints are to do the work of the ministry. And so let's be clear here. The clarification is what is the prime what is the what is the primary content of ministry? Does everyone see that? It's the building up of the body of Christ. So this would of course include outward and inward. Right? There's two dimensions there. It's bringing in Jew and Gentile, but it's also building up. Some churches are really focused on the outward. We would call those more seeker sensitive. Everything is geared around bringing people into the church. But then the inward, the, 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 the spiritual growth of believers is very uh, lacking. It's not there. And so what we see here is a balance. There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. And it's the saints. It's the saints that are doing this work. Now, let's look here at the, this phrase here, and, uh, until we attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to the mature hand, to the mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I just want your reaction to this, Pat. What is significant to you in this, this final clause? I shouldn't say final. There's more to come. <laughs> Paul loves to, to do this. But what is significant about, let, let's talk for a second. Here. What jumps out at you? And this verse, until we all attain to the unity of faith, of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. And this is where uh, we can have the unity of faith and we can have the full knowledge of the Son of God when we are redeemed when we are resurrected no so so okay so great so let's that's really good here so you're bringing up two concepts here so let's first highlight the first part of what what, what pastor henry said unity of the faith and unity of the knowledge of the son of god or we could even rechange this word in so so we have this idea of unity in two areas right? Everyone, everyone, see, everyone sees that. And so H Henry was saying, ultimately, in God's eternal kingdom, right? After the resurrection, ultimately, this is the goal that it's headed. But, but do you see how, so there is this, there is this future component here, right? There's this future component, but is there a present component as well? Does everyone see that, that, that there's also this present component, right? There's a present component in, in, um, in the church now. So excellent observation, Henry. What else do we, let's look closely. What are some other things that really jump out at you about, about this unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God? What are some other things? Let, let me try, uh, Pastor Tim. Um, yeah. one, one, one theology, one understanding of God. Excellent. So, so, you, so, so Pastor Cloyd said there's, there's like we could talk about theology. That's, that's, that's one component. And then what's the other component you said? It's just a rephrasing of knowledge, understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. So... There is a need for us to grow in our understanding, right? There is this fundamentally, people will say like, okay, let's just be in, in unity, no division, but then people really don't have the same, there's a lot of confusion and they just agree to disagree, right? But here there is, um, uh, so of, of the faith is more, this is just a reference to in, in body, of Christ actually this that I, I didn't really look at that there's several ways you could go with that actually yeah I have to think about that because 
in unity of the faith, this would also be a reference in, 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 in context to doctrine. So uh, like, like uh, what's become known as creeds of the faith. Uh, what is the faith for us? And there's, there's a creed, right? So for sure, there's, there's, there's relationship between each other because we're in the faith. There, there could be two nuances there. Let me think about that. I mean, I just kind of saw that as we were writing it out. I have to do some research on that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think about that in just until this moment. So it's really rich. But there is this huge emphasis upon understanding. So if, if the bottom, if this is true, this is really accenting the need of, of truth, right? There is this emphasis upon truth which actually makes great sense, right? Because look here, look at what we have here. We have wind of doctrine. There is uh, deceitful schemes. There's human cunning in the succeeding context. And then there's uh, speaking the truth in love. So actually, I, you know, I'm kind of leaning that both of these are emphasizing really upon this idea of, of truth, that's really um, powerful, okay? Anyone else want to add here? Let, let, let's, let's still take a minute. So there's this huge emphasis upon the goal for the, and, and, and remember, this is, this is coming from the building up of the body of Christ. So there is this huge goal to come to a place of, of maturity in the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God. Any other observations? or reflections from this. There's so much here. Even thinking about, there was a knowledge reference earlier that we studied. It's a theme. Anyone look back at the knowledge that we looked at before? From verse 11, on verse 11, verse 11, there are several functions, you know, several functions for apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, shepherd, teachers. Uh, uh, their main purpose is to equip the saints. So each one of them has its own role in equipping yeah. the saints. Yes. Each one of them has its own role in equipping the saints. Yeah. So in verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of faith. So it may be, you know, maybe uh, one believer, he will, he will be equipped by an apostle's teaching or a prophet's teaching. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Different, different knowledge he will get. So in the church, there are several, several knowledge that a believer can receive from the equipping of these several uh, offices. Excellent. Excellent observation. You get the gold star. You get the gold star. So we're not just looking at, so you have gospel, you have doctrine concerning other things. You have moral teaching law so there, there there's a host of the, the truth is is multifaceted it's very deep right and so we we could say this then comprehensively is god's word right god's word so excellent observation you have um the apostolic teaching you have teachings from um prophets recorded in new testament recorded in ephesians and then you also have the shepherds the evangelists which are preaching the gospel and then also the teachers and so this would also include old testament teaching as well excellent observation henry your main idea is this idea of worthy of calling is that is that your big idea paul yes Yes, sir. In verse one of chapter yeah. four. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. So this is still further clarifying verse one, which is, which is you're making the connection contextually. Excellent. What about this knowledge of the son of God? Where else have we heard about knowledge? Ephesians 1, 1, 17, that the Lord, that the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. So 117, so, so this is like, this is also a proof for, for the divinity of Christ, is it not? Paul, Paul's prayer is the knowledge that they would be filled. God would give them a knowledge 
of him, of God, right? And now maturity is knowledge of the son of God. So it would make no sense to say that they're not the same. Do you see that? Either Paul is using him interchangeably with son, with son of God, at least at, at an equality level, right? Because the prayer is that they would have this understanding. And now Paul's saying, our goal is to have this knowledge, but he doesn't say God. He says the son of God. And so Jesus is God himself. And so there is also this implicit understanding that Jesus is God. Everyone sees that there? Notice here now, I'll just make several other observations. Notice here, we're seeking to attain. The goal is that all of us would attain the unity of the spirit. I'm sorry, the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God. But look at this catch word here. Look at this here. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful connection here. Do you see that? So what we're going to see is these are clarifications. These clarify and add meaning to what it means to be in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. What does that mean? Number one, maturity. Number two, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we saw in Ephesians 1, 1 to 20 to 23, we see that Christ is filling up all things. This refers to lordship. This refers to presence. And, and this does refer to, we could even refer to fellowship as well, right? What is this stature of the fullness of Christ? And all of this is leading us to another word is being conformed to his image. In his lordship, he's leading us, he's ruling us, his presence, his fellowship, it's bringing us into conformity in his image where we could say, being like Christ. So this is, this is expanding upon what it means to be mature and what it means to have the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So this brings new meaning. This brings whole new meaning when people are against theology. They're against going deep. This, this directly flies in the face of that. That doesn't mean that we don't act. Paul rightly brought out, worthy of the calling. We are walking worthy of the calling. And we talked about, let's come back up here really quick. This is, walking worthy is lifestyle. One time we had the lifestyle of the world of Satan. Now we are to have this lifestyle, lifestyle of, of, of the Lord. And fundamentally, it's this patience, peace, gentleness, humility, love unity. And we're going to see more of this throughout Ephesians. Okay. So this is now we are seeing the interplay between knowledge and application here. So if ever people talk about maturity, but they don't want to talk about theology, they don't want to talk about going deep in the text, you know, oh, that leads to division. And now it can lead to division. So I'm not saying it, it doesn't, you know, but it is to say that we should be very interested. We should have this as part of our churches. That's what it is to say. We really need to consider this in, 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 our, in, our, in our church's spiritual growth. I, I, I observe that it, it is very vital for Christian to know more uh, theological view in scripture because it is, a, it is a big help to maturity in our uh, spiritual life. Excellent. Okay, let's go on to verse 14. It doesn't end. What let's let's ask the question. What is the relationship between this 
What is the relationship word that would give us a relationship between verse 14 and verse 13? So we have verse 13 here. We have verse 14 here. What is the, so I'm asking a, uh, a context question to help us. What is the relationship between these two verses? And what would the word be that makes that connection or words, word or words? What's the, what's the connecting word? Anyone? Yeah, so that, Jesus. And what is that relationship, Jesus? It is a conclusion. Oh, okay. So it could be a conclusion. Yeah, it, 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 it could be a conclusion. Let's write this down here. So it could be a conclusion. But has it been reached yet? Has the conclusion been reached yet? No, right? So... If it's not a conclusion, what's a, a relationship word very close to conclusion? We we hope we reach the conclusion. What's that? What is that similar word that's moving us towards a conclusion? It's the hope or faith. Okay, so hope. Uh, stronger than hope. Purpose. The purpose, right? Does everyone see that? The purpose. Nice. Everyone sees so 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 it's it's the purpose. The purpose for us attaining the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, the purpose is that we would no longer be children. You have this, uh, we would not be something. So this is, this, is a, this is a state, and this is negative. So you were all correct. The main idea is maturity, right? So, so I, that's why I didn't want to minimize your comments about maturity and stature. So, so, so those who who mentioned maturity and stature, you are that's the that is also the, the the connecting idea, right? So, this idea here is that we don't want to be. This is a bad description. So, although we are children, in one sense, for sure, fundamentally, we are adopted in Christ. We are his, we are forever God's children, but we don't want to be children. <laughs> Does everyone understand the, the word play here? We would, we would be children in a, we don't want to be children in a maturity sense. Because right, a, a, a child, the image of a child every day, it's a different, right? They change their mind, right? They change their mind. If you have children, you know, they, I have two daughters. Right now, Rosie just she's just focused on something, but but Carmichael, when she, like each day it's different. Something she's locked in on. If you say what's her favorite color, she'll say all of them. <laughs> she always says that, but sometimes she says pink. Okay, um, but there's other things. She'll have one day she'll like one thing, the next day she'll like another. One day she's very happy, another day she's very sad. She's very, we would say English all over the place. She's all over the place sometimes, right? And so here, we don't want to be like children. And let's get specific. What does this look like? The waves of the sea and the wind. So the idea here is we're, we're the, the idea here, let me just draw this idea out. We're, we're, uh, we're in a boat, <laughs> right? We're in this boat. And the wind is, is blowing us about. And, and the, the boat, there's no anchor. And it just goes wherever it wants to go. In, a boat in a storm, you don't know where it's going to end up. And so here, what is the driving force that's causing the boat to go in every direction? What is that driving force? The wind. Okay, so the wind, but the spiritual driving wind. force now. Wind. Doctrine. 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 <laughs> Doctrine or teaching? Yeah, the doctrine of election. Doctrine. <laughs> That's one of them. Yeah. That's... <laughs> My goodness. But more generally, right? It, there's so much doctrine out there. There's so much different teaching. And anyone who just says, okay, whatever, let's just get together and discuss. And what do you feel? Okay, what do you feel? What do you, okay, you have something over there. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't get together and brainstorm and study together, but it is to say that it's, 
doctrine is just not whatever comes to mind. The word of God is sure. It's clear. We struggle to understand it because of our, of our heart condition. But there is doctrine out there. There is truth out there. And so this, the maturity protects us from that. And look at this. Human cunning and craftiness in deceitful schemes. <laughs> when people are playing games, when they have a scheme, do you know people who have schemes? They don't want to share it to you straight. They have this idea, but they're trying to just work around it and they're trying to, to do this or that, right? Brothers, sisters, you could see this as clarifications and further expounding upon every wind of doctrine, or you could see this as three, three ideas, areas of, of doctrine, areas of deceit, areas of human trick. No, that's yeah. good. Trick, what else do we have here? Yeah, craftiness. So here's something to think about. That was about. the description. Remember, that was the description of the serpent at the garden. When before Eve was uh, tempted by the serpent, he was the craftiest. And we and we see that in Ephesians two, right? Ephesians two, we were underneath the course of this world, following the authority of the prince of the power of the air. So we have contextual basis for that. Excellent connection, Kuya Bull Boy. Does everyone see here then that our ministry? especially outward. Don't, don't, I'm going to get practical here, especially when it comes to the, to the presentation of the gospel. It seems to be sometimes we reduce or we tone it down to try to get someone to believe it. We try to, we try to manufacture what only the spirit can give. It's in five steps, and then by the time they should make the decision, pressure them to make that decision, then put them in this and that, and, and, and it's, it's not real. It's a manufactured. So the, the human cunning and deceitful schemes isn't always concerning uh, theft or money. It can also concern pride, ego. It can concern... Um, many control. control, no, excellent control, manipulation, excellent. As leaders, we want to be just honest and transparent with our members. Amen. No gimmicks. Just give it to everyone straight and they can take it or leave it. It's between them and God. That's not to say that, uh, uh, we're going to see here the importance of love, speaking it in love. So I'm not saying to be brash and just rude, but l as leaders, as the body grows, don't try to trick people into, into this or that, or, you know, speak the truth in love, be clear on doctrine, come what may. It's the best policy. And it's really honestly the only way that you're going to reach true maturity. You can manufacture a form of maturity for a period of time, and then the whole church blows up. And, and in actuality, it was never a good foundation to begin with. Let's move on here now. Let's, let's finish up quickly, and then we'll go to our, our breakout session. Rather, so instead of, instead of craftiness, human schemes, all of these winds of doctrine, rather just speak the truth in love. You don't have to slap them around and angry and yell and this and that, but speak the truth and do it in love. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head. So we are growing up into, into Christ. And so brothers and sisters, this, this is the secular uh, and, and, and the spiritual realm. In all areas, we are growing up into we are growing up into Christ. And so if we're growing up into Christ, if Christ is our goal, if Christ is our goal, then we need to be 
heavy on the gospel on a daily basis in our ministries, preaching the gospel to each one of us because we fall short, because it's hard for us to forgive if we haven't been told that God has forgiven us. We become very prideful, and it's like people owe us things. We are growing up into Christ, and so the gospel has to be fundamental in our ministry, not for evangelism outreach, but for our own maturity. What Christ has promised in the past, what Christ has done in this earthly ministry, the example that Christ has given to us, the calling of living a pure and holy life. And we're going to see, we're going to see all of this in Ephesians 4 to 6, what it means to, to grow up into Christ, okay? But there is this fundamental component of including the gospel. And so every day in your sermon, in some way, talk about the gospel. Don't reinterpret the text in the gospel, but connect the gospel to the passage. If you're giving a command to walk a holy life, it, that is an area of despair because we're going to fall short. Bring the gospel. Say that you can walk a holy life because when you stumble, the gospel is there to protect you from the wrath of God. Something like that. So, so in every sermon, when, when, when you're calling people, when you're calling people to evangelize, to share the gospel with their neighbor, the only way they can do that is by the spirit and because what Christ has done for them. And so you, maybe you share before you go out on an evangelistic outreach, all the things that Christ has done for us. And don't we want to share those things with those around us? Do you see what I'm saying? So we're bringing the gospel in many different ways that strengthen us to do the impossible. Sharing our faith can be terrifying. It can be so, so terrifying. The pep talk is what has Christ done for us? Okay. Go through the list, write it out, pray it out, and then go. And so not this fear of if you don't do this, <laughs> they're all going to go to hell. Now, there is, there is truth there, but I'm just saying if, if you're focusing on fear, you're focusing on trying to, to scare your members into <laughs> sharing the gospel. Oh, my goodness. Or pressuring them, putting them on the guilt trip. You're using human cunning. <laughs> Share with them the benefits, the benefits that Christ has done, the peace that Christ has brought us, and share it with them as you go out. So we are growing up into the one who is the head, into Christ himself. We are growing up into Christ. And so our union with Christ, we are in union with Christ him presently, but we're also growing. So this is the, the idea of, of sanctification. from whom the whole body being joined together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow. So this is kind of uh, um, it, so that it builds itself up in love. And so this is kind of really confusing at first. I, I looked at this passage for a while. I want us to see, I kind of diagrammed it out. So um. Let me just put, let me just quickly diagram this for us. There's an actual big idea here. There is a huge idea here. It's connected back with, uh, with Ephesians 4.11. So you have these two descriptions here. So the whole body is joined together, every joint which is being equipped. So this is, this is coming back to Ephesians 4.11. 11 and 12, the equipping of the saints. Diba? So when, the, when every joint is equipped and each part is working properly, look at this. This is amazing. Brothers and sisters, you ready for this? The actor is the body and the object is the body. The body makes the body grow. <laughs> And look at this. Now this is the conclusion here. This is the conclusion here now. So that it builds itself up in love. So in love, the sphere of love. But is not in love. Uh, 
So you would say like, okay, where's all these other moral commands? Where's everything else? It's right here, summarized. It builds itself up in love, loving God and loving others. The summary of the Decalogue, the summary of the entire Old Testament, the summary of the command for the new covenant, love God and love others. And Paul says in Romans 14, if you are loving others, you are fulfilling the law. And so here we have the comprehensive picture of the body growing up itself up in love, being sustained by Christ, being nourished by Christ, and yet doing something. Does everyone see this? This is so powerful. This is so powerful for us to see here. And so when you don't see this growth, the church is dysfunctional. The church is dysfunctional. And look at this here. Growth is not numbers. I'm going to write this down here. Growth is not fundamentally numerical. It's maturity. I don't care if you have 25 members, 100 members, 200 members. Is that body functioning together? Is it healthy? Is it growing? There is nothing here that's focused upon discipleship in the sense of going out and gathering all these people, right? The focus here is the body of Christ, the Ephesian saints that have been called out are growing together. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that people coming in is not part of it. But what I am saying is most fundamental spiritual maturity is not numerical. It's spiritual health in knowledge and being. 